and this is important, runaway inequality will not cure itself. There is no magic pendulum in, in the economy that swings back and forth between more or less inequality. Can I ask uh, a question right there when you say sure. that? Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people who believe that, you know, you can just make incremental changes, you know, here and there, and, and they point to the New Deal as, as their model for saying, you know, change takes time, but we've done it before we can do it. All we have to do is just do, you know, one small thing at a time. But I've never witnessed a systemic issue that's changed, you know, incrementally, like by piecemeal, you know, trying to poke around the edges. What do you think about that? I, I agree with you. I, I, I think that uh, uh, the parts of the New Deal that uh, were not incremental were the parts that made a big difference. Uh, the wage and hour laws, the Wagner Act for, for labor, uh, Social Security, uh, welfare, and most importantly, the incredibly severe controls on Wall Street. We put our foot on the neck of Wall Street for 25, 30 years, and it was really good for the economy. Once we took our foot off, it just they just turned around and bit it off. But anyway, the, the, the point I want to make is uh, uh, too often the press uh, talk and, and politicians talk about the economy as if it was some sort of machine, you know, that has kind of this life of its own. And it's just going to fix itself. You know, it's got the free market will just fix itself. If we only get out of the way, things will get better. That's just not going to happen. We have no evidence that that can happen. We have all the evidence to show that it's going to continue to get worse. Uh, that 844 to 1 is going to be 1444 to 1 in a few years. It's just going to get worse. And we're going to feel more and more impoverished. They're going to be li living a life that we can't possibly imagine. And we're going to be feeling pressed, depressed anxious, insecure, and chewing on each other's legs. So that, that's, that's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is it's going to take a nothing short of a mass movement to change this. This isn't just a question of policy. It's a question of organizing ourselves to really uh, uh, press for significant change. And the last time we did this was in the 1880, last time we took on Wall Street uh, uh, with a mass movement was in the 1880s when the populace, and this was small farmers, black and white, mostly in the South and the Midwest, were absolutely going crazy over the squeeze Wall Street had over the money supply. You couldn't get any loans without going to Wall Street. There was no, the government was totally out of it. And Wall Street dominated uh, all the loan and price policies that dealt with uh, uh, farmers, and they, they were going bankrupt right and left and right and left. So the po this populist movement began, and they went out, they sent uh, 6,000 educators into the field to talk to people about why they needed cooperatives, why they, we needed a federal income tax, why we needed public banks, uh, uh, and so on. And they, uh, uh, they wanted, the, they, they wanted uh, public ownership of railroads, telegraph, telephone. Anyway, they had a big assault and they had an enormous, enormous impact. Virtually the entire New Deal uh, grew out of the ideas put forth by the populace. We got a public bank. Uh, that's the best alternative for Wall Street is to create public banks. We have one in North Dakota, which is the most profitable bank in the whole country. And its top uh, CEO, instead of making $30 million like he would on Wall Street, makes $250,000. Uh, entry level worker makes uh, $35,000. And a ratio of seven to one, not 844 to one. Uh, so there's this, uh, 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 they had this incredible influence. By the way, we got a constitutional amendment because of the populace to have a, 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 allow a progressive income tax. So what do we learn from the populace? Uh, we learn that we need a, just what you said, we need a big, broad, powerful, universal program that we advocate for. And San, the Sanders campaign, uh, I, I think some, I think people don't sometimes realize how incredibly uh, uh, amazing it is that that campaign took off and, and, and came so close to uh, success because he was advocating proposals that he would have been run out of town for uh, years before. Free higher education, single payer health care, a financial speculation tax on Wall Street, which is absolutely critical. Uh, he was calling it like it is. Now, I think he got a, uh, 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 
but he's uh, he was up against a uh, a headwind of what I would call movement silos, because our accommodation to the better we as progressives accommodated ourselves over the last forty years to this better business climate era, the neoliberal era, and we uh, we we fractured ourselves into a series of individual issues, all the identity issues, and the environment, and uh, labor issues, and uh, 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 various uh, uh, war and peace issues. They all became separate issues. We created silos. We went out and created, uh, raised money for those silos. We competed with each other to get those funds. And we developed identities. Uh, and those identities became very pow powerful. So. Environmentalists say I'm an environmentalist. Labor people say I'm labor. Black Lives Matter say I'm black. I'm a black activist, and so on. And uh, immigration activists, uh, same kind of thing. And what the Sanders campaign showed was the power of coming together around some incredibly important themes that would benefit everybody. As you mentioned so rightfully, the people on the bottom are the biggest beneficiaries for the, from these universal programs. Uh, a program for free higher education, single payer health care, uh, and a jobs program that, that deals with youth unemployment, uh, it's going to be the people on the bottom who are disproportionately people of color who are going to benefit the most. Uh, and, and, that, and, and to have everybody support those programs is the only way they could get passed. So uh, breaking out of our silos, uh, one of the CW, one of the communication work, Verizon workers came up with this phrase. He says, I get it. We need to become silo busters. He presented, he said that at a workshop in uh, at the Citizen Action Conference, and he got a standing ovation uh, because people were ready to come out of their silos. They're ready to come together to attack runaway inequality and all its manifestations, and they want a movement. They want a mass movement, which is the only way we can tackle runaway inequality.